Hey Grade 12s and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to be working on question 2 of Hao Teng's 2022 June Paper 1. So let's begin. So question 2, 2.1 we are given. Given the geometric sequence 9 over 2, 9, 18 and then this continues all the way to 2304. 2.1.1 we have to determine the value of R, the common ratio. So to find the common ratio or the constant ratio, all you have to do is always say the next term divided by the previous term. So this can be the term 2 divided by term 1, or you could say term 3 divided by term 2. And I'm going to go with term 3 divided by term 2 because these have numbers and not fractions, and that's just easier to work with. So that is 18 divided by 9, which is really just equal to 2. So moving on to the next question. And then the next question, 2.1.2, .2, we are asked, how many terms are there in the sequence? So in the sequence, you can see that the terms end at 2,304. That's the last value that we have. So to find out how many terms that would be, we have to find out what term exactly is that. And because we're speaking about what term exactly that is, we're going to use the TN formula. Okay, so the TN formula of a geometric sequence or series is tn is equal to a multiplied by r to the power of n minus 1. And so we know what the last term is already. So we know this is our last term. It's also going to be our tn. So you can also just see it as we're using tn because we're just trying to find out what n is. So that is the term value. So in place of tn, I'm saying that number 2304 is equal to, and our a is our first term, which is 9 over 2. So 9 over 2 multiplied by our r, which we know now as 2, multiplied by 2 to the power of n minus 1. And so we're just trying to solve for n. In order to solve for n, we just have to get n on its own. The first thing that is disrupting us from finding n would be this 9 over 2, if we can get rid of this number, then we'll get closer to this 2 to the power of n minus 1. So we can divide both sides of the equation by 9 over 2. And so that is, to find this, we're just going to say 2304 divided by 9 over 2, and we get 512. So 512 is equal to, that cancels, and we left the 2 raised to the power of n minus 1. Okay. Now we have an exponential equation where n is still missing. So to find n, we're going to have to make the bases the same so that we can equate the exponents. So how can 512 be put as a base of 2? Well, you can simply on your calculator just press 512 is equal to, then press shift and the fact button. You're going to notice that on your calculator, that button is going to have, it's going to look like a degrees and three commas. Okay. Then it's 2 to the power of 9. So 2 to the power of 9 is equal to 2 raised to the power of n minus 1. Now that the bases are the same, we can go ahead and just equate the exponents. So we're saying, therefore, 9 is equal to n minus 1. Then we're taking the negative 1 over. And so that will become a positive 1. So 9 plus 1, that is 10. And so we know now that n is equal to to 10. Okay, so that is how many terms there would be in the sequence. You can conclude there are 10 terms in this sequence. Okay, so I'm just saying there are 10 terms. So moving on to the next question. So the next question 2.2, .2, we are given a sigma. So that is the sum. The sum from k is equal to 1 to infinity of this pattern or with this formula, 6 multiplied by m to the power of k minus 1 is equal to 12. We have to determine the value of m. Okay, so notice that we're starting at 1, we're ending at infinity. So this is the sum to infinity. Then they give us the formula or the tn pattern for this, or the in this case tk pattern, for this series. And they also tell us it's equal to 12. So we know what the value of the sum to infinity is. But with this pattern, I also want you to just notice this. The general formula of your tn pattern is tn is equal to a bracket r to the power of n minus 1. And as you can see, this one is taking the same 
form it's taking the same form so as you can see we have a here that is going to refer to our a the m is really our r and as you can see we have k minus one but here n minus one okay so to find the sum to infinity the sum to infinity is equal to a over one minus r so you can see that all we need here is the value of a and the value of r so let's just search for that in here our value of a is going to be as you can see it matches that perfectly so it's six the value of a is six and the value of r is m okay so that is our value of r and we also know what the sum to infinity is the sum to infinity they told us that all of this the sum from k being equal to 1 to infinity is 12 so the sum to infinity is 12 so all we have to do here is substitute this in and solve for m so sum to infinity in place of that i'm going to put 12 is equal to our a which is 6 over 1 minus r which is m and let me just put m in a different color so m so we just have to solve for m to solve for m because we have a fraction a number and an equal to in between them we can cross multiply so first of all put this 12 over 1 to make it a fraction and then we're going to cross multiply 12 multiplied by this you can rewrite this as 12 multiplied by 1 minus m because the 12 has to multiply into the one and the m so the 12 is not just going to multiply into one of the terms here then again we have six one times six which is going to just give you a six and now we just have to solve for m so you could have done it in a way of multiplying this 12 in but i can see an easier way of doing this we can just get rid of the 12 by dividing both sides of the equation by 12 and so now here we just have a one minus m which is equal to 6 over 12, which is just a half, so a half. And then now we just have to take this m, I'm going to take it over since it's negative. So if you take the m over, here's our equal to, m is now positive. And then over here, we still have the 1. Then we can take this 12 instead over, and that becomes minus 12. So 1 minus 12 is a half, and so it means that m is just equal to a half. Okay, so that is that question 2.2 .2. moving on to the next question okay so 2.3 says the third term of a geometric series is 18 and the fifth term is 162 determine the sum of the first seven terms where r is less than zero okay so we're going to look at the information they've given us first of all they told us the third term t3 of this geometric series is 18 and then they told us that t5 is 162 but then after we have worked that out we're going to have to determine the sum of the first seven terms where r is smaller than zero so to determine the sum of terms you're going to need the value of a and you're going to need the value of r so that's why they're giving you that information to find a and r so this is how we can use the information they've given us so since they're giving us terms, we can use the term formula of geometric patterns. So that is Tn is equal to A multiplied by R to the power of N minus 1. Remember they told us the they told us T3. So we know that term 3, that is equal to 18. And we also know that term 5 is equal to 162. We're going to take this information and substitute it into the Tn formula. So instead of Tn, we know what n is T3 is equal to A. We don't have A yet. Multiplied by R, we also don't have R yet. So the power of n minus 1, we know what n is, so it's 3 minus 1. So it means that T3 is just going to be equal to A multiplied by R to the power of 3 minus 1 is 2. So R squared, that is T3. So now that we have this, you also have to remember that we know the value of T3 is term 3 is equal to 18. So in place of T3, we can say 18 is equal to, now it's just AR to the power of 2. Okay, and this is really our first equation. So I'm going to substitute. In place of this, I'm saying T5 is equal to A, we don't know what A is, multiplied by R to the power of, n minus 1 so that's 5 minus 1 
And so T5 is equal to A R to the power of 4. But we know what T5 is. T5 is 162. So 162 is equal to A R to the power of 4. Okay, so see this like this. You can see this as your first equation and that as your second equation. So this is one way of doing this. You can also, this is an alternative way of finding this. So because this is a geometric pattern, you can't say equation two divided by equation one. And if we do this, this is what we're going to have. So remember, since we are dividing these equations, also remember that the equations have two hand sides. They have a left hand side and a right hand side. So the left hand side must be divided by the left hand side. So that is the 162 being divided by the 18. And that is going to be equal to, because they all have equal to, we also have to say the right hand side, which is AR to the power of 4, divided by the right hand side of equation 1. So that's AR to the power of 2. Okay, so this is what we have so long. And so here you can see that A and A would cancel, and then you just be left with 162 divided by 18. That gives us 9. So we have 9 is equal to r to the power of 4 divided by r to the power of 2. Remember the bases are the same and we're dividing. So you need to subtract the exponents. So the base will stay the same. It will stay an r. But 4 minus 2 is 2. So this is what we have so long. And to solve for r, we're just going to go ahead and square root both sides of the equation. But remember, in front of the number, we're always going to say plus, minus, because not only the positive of this would work, the negative would work as well. So R really is just going to be equal to a positive or a negative 3, because the square root of 9 is 3. So R is either equal to positive 3 or R is equal to negative 3. So also just remember, it's because this is saying r squared is equal to 9. So something squared is equal to 9. Even if you said 3 squared, it will give you 9. But if you said negative 3 squared as well, it would also give you 9. And that's why we include the plus minus. So let's go ahead and check back in the information and see which one we can accept. Remember they said where r is less than 0. So r needs to be less than 0, meaning we cannot take three because three is not less than zero so we can cancel three and take only this one so r is equal to negative three so this is the way that we can do this but also just remember if it was the case that they gave you an arithmetic formula instead what you're going to have to do is instead of saying equation two divided by equation one you could instead say equation two minus equation one okay so we have r and now we just have to find a Okay, so we have r as negative 3. Let's find a. a we're going to find by basically substituting r into one of these formulas, into equation 1 or equation 2. Always take the easy one. Equation 1 looks so much more simple. So we're going to take 18 is equal to a r squared. And in place of r, we're going to just substitute negative 3. So a multiplied by a negative 3 raised to the power of 2. Okay, so... To solve for a, we're going to have to just divide both sides by this. So we just have 18 is equal to a, and that is a 9. That becomes 9. So negative 3 squared. And so divide both sides by 9, and we're going to get a. If we divide 18 divided by 9, that is going to give you 2. So a is equal to 2. So now that we have a and r, we can go ahead and find the sum of the first seven terms. Okay, so to the sum of the first seven terms, we need the SN formula. So here, R is smaller than 1. So I'm just going to use the formula. SN is equal to A bracket 1 minus R to the power of N over 1 minus R. Honestly, it doesn't matter. If you use the other one, it would still work. So if you use this one, it would still work. So we want the sum of seven terms. So we're saying the sum of seven terms is equal to A is 2. So 2 multiplied by 1 minus r being negative 3. So we have negative 3 raised to the power of 7 in place of n. And then all over 1 minus, again, we have negative 3. And I'm just going to put that in brackets. So let's put this all onto the calculator and see what we get. And as you can see on the calculator, we get that the sum of 7 terms is equal to 1094 okay so that is our answer there so done with 
2.3 and we're moving on to the next question. Now 2.4 says, the general term of a quadratic number pattern is Tn is equal to An squared plus Bn plus C. And its first term is 8. So that is the first term of the quadratic number pattern. Okay, so quadratic, I'm just going to put those in blue. That's 8. Then they say the general term of the first differences of the pattern is Tk is equal to 4k minus 2. So of the first differences, the pattern is this, the formula of the pattern. And what they want us to do is to determine the next two terms of the quadratic number pattern, Tn. So they want us to find the next two terms of that pattern, not the first difference of the quadratic. Okay, so in order to do this, you need to be able to see the big picture in it. Since this is a quadratic pattern, you know that you're first supposed to have your quadratic pattern here, and then the first differences, and then the second differences. So let's put that down first. What do we have in the quadratic pattern? Well, they told us that the first term is 8. So we at least know that. We don't know what the second term is, but we know that. Then what do we have in the first differences? They told us that the general term of the first difference is this. We have the formula of the first difference. And this is more than enough to actually find everything really. So if we have this, we have tk is equal to 4k minus 2. Okay. In order to find the first term in the first difference, we can just in place of k substitute 1 to find the first term. So it means that t1, our first term in our first difference, which is, remember, which is formed by saying term 2 in the quadratic pattern minus term one in the quadratic pattern. That gives you your T1 of your first difference. That's going to give us that. So let me just move these down. So that is going to give us this over here when we do this. Okay, so I'm also just going to label these ones as since they call the quadratic number pattern TN with a capital letter T. So I'm going to call this, this is T1 belonging to the quadratic pattern, T2, and of course it will keep going to T3 and so on. Okay, so let's find T1 first. So we're going to substitute in place of K. Let's put in 1. So we're saying 4 multiplied by 1 and then minus 2. Since this belongs to the first difference, it's the formula for it. So we have this is equal to, that's going to be 4. 4 times 1 is 4 minus 2, which is equal to 2. So now we know that T1 is equal to 2. So we have that. That is 2. Okay, so now let's see, focus on exactly what they are asking you to do. They want you to find the next two terms of the quadratic number pattern. To find the next two terms of the quadratic number pattern, you can see that to find term 2, for example, you have to say term 1 here, this 8, plus this 2, and that would give you that term. And that is, of course, because if you had term 2, you would have said term 2 minus term 1 to give you this 2. Okay, so we're going to say 8 plus this. That gives you 10. So that's how we find term 2. So you can actually put that down. We're saying that term 2 would be equal to, we're going to take the 8, which is term 1, plus the 2. And it's only plus because this 2 is positive. So plus the 2. And so term 2 is really just equal to 10. So we have term 2 now as 10. So we can put that in here, 10. Okay, so now that we have term 2, Notice that in order to find term 3, we're going to have to say term 2 plus whatever term 2 of the arithmetic pattern, the first difference is, whatever that is to get term 3. So we're going to have to look for T2 in the arithmetic pattern now. So T2 would be term 2 is equal to, we're going to say 4, and in place of K, we'll put in 2, then minus 2. 4 times 2 is 8, 8 minus 2 is 6, so that is 6. So we have this now as 6. So it means in order to get term 3, we're going to say term 3, is going to be equal to, we're going to take the 10 plus 6. So 10, and it's a positive, that's why we're adding, plus 6 is going to give you term 3 as 16. Okay, so that is our term 3, 16. And that's how we get the next terms in this pattern. You see, so this was enough to help you. They just needed to give you this and at least the first term. 
you would have been able to find the other terms that come after it. Okay, so you can just conclude and tell them that this is your answer. Term two and term three, that would be the next two terms. Okay, so moving on to the next question, 2.4.2. Then the next question, 2.4.2 says, hence or otherwise, show that the general term of the quadratic number pattern is given by Tn is equal to this. Okay, so to find the general term, you can see that this is basically complete. We have the quadratic pattern, the first different. We just need to find the second different. The second difference is found by saying term 2 minus term 1 of the first difference. And we're going to get 6 minus 2, which is just 4. So now it's complete. We can find everything we need. Also, another way to find this easily without even doing any calculation would be in your arithmetic pattern, the formula for it, it would be the coefficient of k or whatever uh, variable they put here. So that is your difference. Okay. So to find the general pattern, we're going to use the first term of the quadratic, the first difference, and the second difference. And we're going to say, first of all, the second difference will equate it to 2a. And then the first difference will equate it to 3a plus b. And then the first term of the quadratic, we equate it to a plus b plus c. And so we can just find it now by saying 2a is equal to 4. So 2a being equal to 4, solve for a, we divide both sides by 2. And so a is equal to 2. Then to find b, 3a plus b will be equal to 2. And so in place of a, we're going to substitute 2. So 3 times 2 plus b is equal to 2. So plus b being equal to 2. And I'm going to now say b is equal to, I'm still going to leave the 2 here. And so I know that 3 times 2 is 6, and that's a positive 6. So we take it over and becomes a negative 6. So b is equal to 2 minus 6, which is equal to negative 4. And then lastly, to find c, a plus b plus c must be equal to 8. So that is just 2 plus, okay, not going to be a plus, it's a minus because of the negative 4. Remember, it's just like plus negative 4. And so if that multiplies in, it just becomes a minus 4. So we're saying 2 minus 4, and then we have plus C is equal to 8. So I'm just going to say C is equal to, and I'm dropping the 8 down. So 2 minus 4 is negative 2. You're taking the negative 2 over and becomes a positive 2. So we have C being equal to 10. And there we go. So it means that therefore Tn is equal to our An squared. 2 is A, so 2N squared plus Bn. B is negative 4, so negative 4N plus C, which is a positive 10, so plus 10. And that is our final answer here. And then we have the last question in question 2. 2.4.3, which term of the quadratic number pattern will be equal to 3050? So remember, they are asking you which term. So here they're just asking you, since they're talking about term, they're speaking about n. We don't know what n is. Which term of the quadratic pattern will be equal to this number? Okay, so when we're trying to find out what the term belonging to a specific term value is then this is going to be our tn value because that's our term value and because n is missing it's going to help us to find n so the tn formula of this as we can see is this so in place of tn we will replace it with 3050 so we really just say 3050 is equal to and then we have 2n squared minus 4n plus 10. Okay, so we just have to solve for n. To solve for n, this is a quadratic equation. The minute you see n squared, so it's best to take the constant over that number without a variable. So we have 0 here is equal to 2n squared minus 4n. Then we have a plus 10. And when this comes over, it's going to become negative. So see it as it's a positive 10 minus 3050 because that becomes negative. So here we just have negative 3040. Okay, now that we have this, I want you to notice that in each term on this right hand side, notice that everything can be divided by 2. So let's make this equation look simpler by dividing both sides by 2. 
So we have now 0 divided by 2, which is 0, is equal to this 2n squared divided by 2. 2 would cancel. You'd be left with n squared, then negative 4n divided by 2, negative 2n. And then this number, negative 3040 divided by 2. So if I divide that by 2, we get negative 1520, so minus 1520. Okay, and then we have to factorize this. Well, you don't actually have to factorize it. So this is what you can do to pretend you factorized it. You can say 0 is equal to, open up two brackets, and this is easier when you have just n squared and not a 2n squared or anything here. So you're going to use the quadratic formula, but you're just not going to show them that you use the quadratic formula. You're going to put it in like this. So put a fraction, we're saying negative b. So negative, and we know that b here is negative 2. Okay, so that's just our value of b. Let me just put this, these in red. This is our value of b. Our value of c is this negative 1520. And then our value of a, as you can see in front of the n squared, there is an invisible one because there's nothing here. So a is just that one. So let's just put this into the quadratic formula. We're saying negative b. So negative bracket negative 2 plus minus, but I will start with a minus. So minus the square root of b squared. So we have negative 2 squared minus 4ac. So minus 4 times a, which is 1 times c, which is negative 15, 20, close bracket, all over 2a, but 2 times 1. You don't even have to put the 1 because it's just going to become 2 either ways. We get a negative 38. So this is how to work this out. This is telling you the solution for n. It's not telling you the factor. In here, in these brackets, you're first going to have an n times an n so that you can get your n squared. This is telling you the answer. It's telling you that n is equal to negative 38. So if you think about it, what was in here so that we can we got an answer of n being equal to negative 38? It must have been n plus 38 because you would have said n plus 38 is equal to 0. Then taking the 38 over and it would be n is equal to negative 38. So that's something you can do. And then we have, again, the last one being or. Let's just change that into a plus now. So because of that plus minus. So that becomes a plus And we get an answer of n being equal to 40. So it means your factor must have been n minus 40. So that you could have gotten that answer. So this is another way to just do it and it will look like you factorized, but you didn't really. Because it's quicker like this, you know, you're trying to save time during your exam. So I noticed that in the video, I didn't conclude on this. So when you're choosing which one is the right answer, you cannot take the one that is negative because your terms are never negative. Your terms are always positive. So it means that n is equal to 40. So the term that will be equal to this will be term 40 that will be equal to 3050. Okay, so that's it for question two. And then we move on to question three. Okay, so now we're on question three. And question three says, the figure below represents a pattern of shaded triangles placed on a white rectangular board. The triangles all have equal bases of four units. So each of these have four units in length. Then the height of the first triangle is one unit. Okay, so the height of this first triangle is just one unit. And then they also tell us that each of the triangles height thereafter is one unit more than the previous one. So this one would be two units and the next one would be three units and so on. But remember that each of the triangles have a base of four units, all of them. And this is what they're asking us. They say in 3.1, determine the area of the first triangle. Okay, so to find the area of a triangle, the area of a triangle is equal to a half multiplied by its base multiplied by its height. So we're saying a half multiplied by the base being four units and multiplied by the height. Remember of the first triangle, the height of the first triangle is just one unit. So if we calculate this, a half times four is just like saying half of four, which is two multiplied by one, which is just two. So the area of the first one would be two 
units squared okay because it's in area okay so that's the first question moving on to the second question and as you can see it's just for one mark and then now the second question 3.2 says determine the area of the 26th triangle okay so let's just see the pattern being formed here remember that all these triangles regardless of what triangle it is triangle four whatever it is it will always have a base of four units the only thing that is changing in the triangles are the heights so the first triangle the units is really just one unit the second triangle has a height of two units third three units so you can already expect the 26th triangle would have a height of 26 units so the first thing we know about this triangle we know its height 26 and then we also know that its base is never going to change they're all going to be four units because they told us that so we also know the base is equal to four so we can find the area of this triangle again using the area formula so a is equal to a half times the base times the height but it's already there so i'm just going to fill in so a half multiplied by four multiplied by the height which is 26. so we can see this as a half times four which is two and then two multiplied by 26 which is 52. so the area of this triangle is 52 units squared because it's in units okay and then moving on to the last question 3.3 .3. so now 3.3 .3 says the triangles are placed on a rectangular board with a length of 104 units as shown above so all these triangles are placed on this rectangular board and the length is that 104 units okay then they say as shown above determine the area of the unshaded parts of the white triangular board that is the area of the part not covered by shaded triangles so when we're looking at this board this is what they want they want the unshaded part the parts that is not including the triangles so all of this white parts that's what they want so if you think about it as a physical piece of paper that you can see when you're trying to find the area of the unshaded part it's kind of like taking this full board as it is and just cutting out all the triangles from it, removing every triangle and just removing everything that is a triangle from it. And of course, these triangles will keep going, keep going, keep going. So in other words, we have to find out what is we can take the sum of each of the areas of the triangles, all those spaces. We can get the sum of everything and then get the area of the full board and subtract the sum of the area of the triangles from it that will give us that unshaded part okay but from what i just mentioned remember i said we would have to find this whole area first then remove the shaded triangles from that area so the first thing to do is let's find the area of this entire board so the area of the entire board this is a rectangle so we're just going to use length times breadth the length we know that we know that the length of this is 104 units but then the breadth what is that so how would we know what would be the breadth well the breadth of it or in other words the height of it would be you have to think about what is the last triangle that we have what is the height of the last triangle that we have that would be the exact same thing as your breadth. So if we can find that, what is the last triangle that we're going to have and what is its height? Now, they've also given you another clue to figure this out. The fact that they said that each triangle is going to keep having four units as a base. So think about it like this. We know how long this rectangle is. And all of these, we're going to have triangles with a base of four units. So imagine it's like four plus four plus four, and it keeps going up to 104 units so up until 104 units we're just going to keep on counting the force and it's all going to give us that so to find out how many triangles there would be it's like trying to find out how many fours do we keep adding together and so to find out how many fours do we keep adding together in order to get the full length of 104 units you can just say 104 divided by four that will tell you how many fours you keep adding Okay, so I'm going to call this the number of triangles. 
Okay, that will be the 104 divided by 4. And if you say 104 divided by 4, we get 26. Okay, so there's 26 triangles. Now that we know the number of triangles, this is what we can do. We know that there are 26 triangles or 26 bases as well. Remember that the first triangle had a height of one unit. The second triangle had a height of two units. The third triangle will have a height of three units. So if there are 26 triangles, the last triangle is the 26th triangle. And so it will have a height of 26 units. If the height of this triangle is 26 units, that is also the breadth of the triangle. So that's another thing we're concluding. We found now the breadth of the triangle. So I can go ahead and say breadth is equal to 26 units. That's what I found from that. Okay, now that that is done, we know what the length of this rectangle is. We know what the breadth of the rectangle is. We can find the area of the rectangle. When we find the area, we're going to take that and subtract from it the areas of all the 26 triangles. So let's find the area of the rectangle first. So the one thing you must always do is make sure you're naming or you're, you're naming all the equations that you have so that you don't confuse yourself. So the area of rectangle, so not that unshaded part. And that is going to be equal to length times breadth. And we already know the length. The length they gave us was 104 units. So that's 104 multiplied by the breadth, which we found to be 26 units. So 104 multiply by 26, that gives us 2,704 units squared. That is the area of our rectangle. Okay, so we hold on to that. Now that we know the area of the rectangle, we have to subtract from that area the sum of the areas of all our triangles. So now we have to find out what is the sum of all the areas of these triangles. The areas of these triangles are also going to create a pattern. So let's actually look at the pattern it creates. We saw that the first triangle was just two units squared, right? So the area of that triangle. So the first triangle, or I'll say that as term one, first triangle or triangle one. Okay, the first triangle was just two units squared. The second triangle, look at what's going to change. Only the height is changing. So it's the same thing as saying a half multiplied by the four still stays the same. It's a base. It doesn't change. The height changes from the first triangle to the second triangle. The height is two. So we can see now the second triangle will have an area. So triangle two will have an area of four units squared. So let me just remove the unit squared for now, just to remove confusion. Then the third triangle, triangle three, will have the height being three units instead. So we change that two to three. And so we can see, okay, that's six. So as you can see, this pattern, this is an arithmetic pattern. But remember also in this pattern, we also know the last one. The last triangle is the triangle 26 because we found that there were 26 triangles, which makes sense that they were asking us here for the area of the 26 triangle. Okay, so if the area of the 26 triangle is 52 units squared, so I'm going to just take that and put that at the end. Triangle 26 has an area of 52 units squared. So this is the pattern for the area of all the triangles. We just have to find out the sum of all the areas of the triangle so we can find out how much space is being covered by all these shaded triangles. Okay, so to find the sum of these shaded triangles. This is an arithmetic pattern. And the good thing about this arithmetic pattern is we can see the first term. We can also see the last term. And we know how many terms there are. There are 26 terms because there are 26 triangles. So we can use this formula instead. You can use the formula that says Sn is equal to n over 2 multiplied by a plus l. So let's use that. We're going to say the sum of 26 terms is equal to 26 over 2 multiplied by a, which is just the 2, plus our last term, which is the 26th term, is 52. We can go ahead and put this onto the calculator and let's see what we get. And so now we find that the sum, okay, of the 26 triangles, the areas of them is 702 
units squared. Okay, let's actually just conclude this. These are the this is the area of the shaded triangles that is equal to 702 units squared. Okay, now that we have that, we have all that we need to find the unshaded part. So the unshaded part, we simply just find that by saying the area of the entire rectangle minus the area of all these triangles being summed up. So the area of the entire rectangle was that area of rectangle. That's why it's important to label everything. So area of unshaded part will be equal to the area of the rectangle, which is the 2704, 2704, you know, units squared minus the area of the shaded triangles, which is the 702 units squared. So let's see what the answer will give us. Okay, just looking at this, you can see it's going to give you 2000 and because now 700 minus 704 minus 702, that's just going to be 2002 units squared. Okay, so that is the area of the unshaded part. Okay, and that's it for question three and that's it for this video. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.